long-awaited reunion has brought Maru face to face with an unsettling revelation of the truth. Now he finds himself at a crossroads in the mind of the enemy. Mind Reeker. Background. Anger. Episode 7. He who holds the blade. slips the mortal coil. Mankind suffers for slumber. There is no grace and longing, indiscriminate damnation. Beyond you and me, there is a blue horizon, the mirage of desire, ever distant, ever taunting. I saw the face of the one who answers, and he gave me questions, a riddle with no satisfaction, destiny with no end. Suffering on loan, bad connection, dropped call, full body apparition. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. I cannot be the judge of God. But he judges you. He made me. He made you, and he is you. It's not within my power. There are three settings on the box predetermined outcomes from which to choose. Actually, we have a theory on that. What kind of theory? We think the power comes from you, not the box. The box is simply a way to ensure that you only use the power in the way he wanted you to. Your theory is wrong. I didn't ask to be created. I didn't ask to be judged. Why do I have to die? If I did as you ask, if I even had the power at my disposal, you would create a universe without any hope of redemption. A universe without the goal of transcendence would truly be a universe without hope. A universe of eternal suffering. I don't need God to have meaning in my life. Why do you assume the entire universe does? Then why not simply judge mankind as worthy? Redeem creation? Because that lets him off the hook. This isn't about whether mankind is good or bad. I want retribution. I want him to pay for all the suffering he's created. Non-stop violence, the eminence front, a war in heaven leads to blood and dirt. Fallout regime, the meat grinder, murder cycle and the electric chair, everything falling apart, the mask fractured, purveyor of doom. This is the end of cat and mouse. A universe in the shape of a mushroom cloud. I'll give you some time to think it over, Maru. Let me be your universe. You will see that I'm right. An inverse engagement. Hypnagogic straits. Butterfly wings in the killing fields. Michelle and her compatriot Carl vanish in the air. The rain begins to fall outside the window. And I'm here with Caleb, traitor. Bastard. Object of my hate. You gotta admit, she's ambitious. Death mantra screams, blackness consumes. I feel content in my vindictive splendor. Peace as the soul shatters, my consciousness turned inside out, flayed and drawn, the suffering of the executioner. The archetype, primordial image naked and decayed, the beginning and the end, the drifting night. The thing we love the most is the worst thing for us. The thing you love the most will destroy you. The eternal damnation of the soul in the heart. Burning desire, the embers of the funeral pyre. 
There's no attachment you can have that's not attached. Nothing you can love that isn't loved. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Unsympathetic suicide. spills out, the death soup in tears. I take the knife to my own throat, existential razor bleeding with regret. Turn the worm in the sour stone. It makes it hard to listen, the wailing of the damned. Fully entitled, lust for the scam. Lieutenant in the desert, the crow flies upside down. No penance for the ghost, the linear god. I was sick with possession, vacated by murder. Then my eyes beheld the box, the goddamned box. It's not possible. Invisible vortex, Baker's Row, ten steps to the bus stop drill. World torn asunder by God and false God. God without identity, a faceless God without remorse. The stoic void, a life made of stone. Can it be true? I approach my burden, a hole in my step. Take a seat in front of it. All you create and all you destroy. Karma melts in the flames of Shiva's third eye. What cost the invisible truth, ten eyes out of space, sight of the simmering madness, two shades of gray, creator and created. I place my fingers along the edges of the box. It roars to life, the Lion of Judah. I wasn't made for getting old. This betrayal whispers dark secrets to my soul, tales of suicide, stories of peace, bliss and eternal nothing. All we want is peace and happiness. Every living soul, every last one. I could give it to us all with a twist of a digit, a turn of my mind. Michelle suffers to bring on the destruction of meaning. A lie, all of it, every single word. God damn this madness, god damn it all. I heave and nothing comes. Devastation corpse, the smell of treachery. It's only a matter of time before reality breaks you. The winner holds out the longest, but even they fall in the end. Chewed up, swallowed whole, and spit back out again. Anger wells up inside, a raging funeral pyre. Strike the match upon the ocean, the fury spreads wide. For the first time, I feel the energy of the box flow through me, no longer without the universe inside. Resolution, restitution, integration gun, transmigration of the executioner's blade. of sorrow, the dual shade of light. I see myself reflected in the water, a flaming sword in my grip. A tree grows up from the ocean, reaching up to the heavens and stretching out across the universe. A heartbeat echoes through reality. The pulse of totality fills my ears. An altar appears, the lamb sprawled on top, neck presented to me for the cut. A shadow passes over, birthed from an unseen sun. The roar of invaders fills the void, drowning the pulse of eternity in their furor and throes, beating the drums of the ego death. I raise the flaming blade. <laughs> Behold my might, the hand of God, the unseen, the all-seeing, the end and the beginning, the circle of light and darkness, the destroyer of man and God alike, creation killer. Dishonesty hugs the satin walls, abandoned, left alone without a soul in a universe of denial. Deserted by creation, the savior cast out. Mine is the hand of judgment, the lonely task, solemn burden. Michelle desires for me to turn my judgment away from man and cast it upon God himself, a power now confirmed to rest firmly in my grasp.
And then the veil of darkness takes over my crown. I stumble to the bed and fall into the arms of the incomplete. Sleep the sleep of the embryo, safe beyond reality's demanding grasp. Michelle was there, arguing and berating, caught up in a rage of some circumstance I couldn't quite make out. I was standing in the foyer of an unfamiliar home. I could see her arms gesticulate wildly, the pacing, the pointing, but I never saw her face directly. It seemed to be little more than a blur, some impressionist joke at my expense. I have mistaken the effect for the cause. Deleterious aggression, subversion paradigm, an oblique sun in the night sky, heaven with the sky gone out. I am the fool by my own self-made. The numbers agree to collusion, an alliance of necessity born. Mutual admiration, sublimation, arbitration. Allies with the knives at their backs. Entanglement of necessity. The equations manufacture reality. No deception relative to their station. Quantum action haunting from a distance. Ultimatum decimation, a ransom of hosts. I do the job clean of aspiration. There is no control and obligation. I am a number, random and unequaled, secure in my actions as whole, oblivious to paralyzing delusion, prisoner in my illusion. Numbers cannot lie, totalitarian in their absolute manifestation. My fingers enter value into digital space, writing reality in cuneiform action. Absent of passion, function performed, the mind dancing with aspiration, innovation, fulfillment, and gum. But it is only tension, the qualification of illusion, a bit part in the dream of a sleeping giant. I'm at a minimum of virtue, chest bomb sings. I've started smoking again. The text chime scares me back to life, that hideous duty of the Gorgon stare. The message reads, New target, let's meet. Where? I reply. The usual comes back, but they killed Andre there. It's compromised. They won't do anything to you. Fine, tonight. Usual time. Hollow objective, translucent desire. Let pace slow the Reaper man. He is waiting for me among the caffeine and prattle. Familiar countenance, improper shade. Brown is a new look, but I think I prefer you in blue. I do not seek to disturb the fragile realities of the other customers. Welcome, Marlon. We have important work to do.
circuitous argument, down by degrees, raise up the inspiration, moving in a forward direction. There is a word in the darkness of the self-penetrating soul, the suffering barely heard, the tiny voice in the wind. Cause and effect meeting at the watering hole. Welcome back. We thought you were shadow meat. It did take a little untangling to get out of that one. What were you thinking? Going into Michelle's consciousness on your own like that? Lucky for me, you were right there to save me. You've spoken to Michelle, I take it. She told me everything. You lied to me. How could you not tell me? I had to make a choice, Maru. It was clear she got an idea into her head about that box of yours and she wasn't going to let it go. She was a great warrior. I didn't want to destroy her. She deserves better than that. I thought it best to neutralize her until I could figure out a solution. You should have told me. And lose the both of you. This world needs you, Maru. To tell you would have done more bad than good. Well, your lies solve nothing because now she's back. Yes. Without my presence on this plane to hold her, the bars of our cell simply faded away. And your little isolation prank seems to have given her time to figure out her master plan. Well, how so? She wants me to use the box to judge God, as he would judge us. Such a thing is not possible. Oh, it is. I've seen it. Well then, Mara, Mind Raker, judge of man and god alike, you have quite a choice to make. Brown fingers turn blue as they slide the familiar envelope across the table. Time stills its pitter-patter heart. Our world becomes a bubble in an unassuming space. Here is the target. Wait for the signal. And then he is gone, evaporating into the air, a faded dream with an underlying threat, leaving me alone with my duty. Alone with the choice. I study the faces of my fellow coffee shop patrons. A tapestry of desire grasping at attachment. Caffeine glory hole, blasphemous eyes, and unconscious concern. The turning of the rod, mask of the pharaoh. Blood unclean and servitude's rot. We are born alone, we die alone. Just like our god and creator, alone. Always alone. A singularity, universe of one. I am slow. It's a violent line towards humanity, an exclusive passivity, depth perception in the quantum field. There is a negative shape to reality. Life is an uncomfortable swim in a depraved river of madness, a fractured countenance, divinity in the light. The weight bears heavy on my weary gait. I sit at the table, lay the envelope in front of me, take out my phone. Missed call from the silent ringer teases me back to the folly of a painting called Normal. Michelle, the other Michelle, the true Michelle, African-American, age 33, average but attractive, single, never married. No message. I tap her number and the ringing tone holds me hostage. No answer. Straight to voicemail. Hey, you've reached Michelle. Do your thing and I'll do mine. Hi, Michelle. This is Maru. Just wanted you to know I got your message. I should have called sooner, but thank you. I'd like to see you sometime, if, if you're open to it. Anyway, uh, give me a call. Hope to hear from you. Bye. The immutable intercourse of time and expectation, a hard-on for completion. Let slip the limbic rhythm, the pulse of impermanence, cruel flavor of desire. It is cold, this place inside of me. Deliverance is a distant star in a vacant sky. Hope plays at the carnival, lights, camera, action, portray. The harmony of creation and destruction, dharma bullet to the head, collateral and self-inflicted, collective karma, the tide gone out, tidal wave on the horizon. I open a drawer, rummage around to find Michelle's mission packet, scan the information for her webcam address. Beyond meaning and regress sits the gesture of truth, the lie behind the lie. The space between space, the microcosm of desire, permanent lines and a temporary face. I plug in the address and Michelle appears in webcam pixel cream. Sweet nectar of the physical, a symphony in the white noise. She spreads her truth, inserts hope, grinds on expectation. I hold the facade, gripping tightly the shadow mold. 
indiscriminate yearning, the bristles in Shiva's brush, connection without correction. The quivering mirage serves a course of phantom heat. Hands hold the counterfeit longing, penetration of industrial hope. Then a figure appears behind her, Michelle lost and unaware, my senses confused and disconnected, cause and effect, mind's eye blinded in the ether. It's a man. His hands come from behind, some sort of cable in his grip. He wraps it around Michelle's throat. Her eyes bulge, face turning red, legs kick, the camera tips violently, arms flail, reaching out for meaning. I shoot it from my seat, shaking my screen. No! No! Her body slows, involuntary struggles as the life drains out. Then the face comes into view. Carl, white male, 45, medium build, goatee, weak chin, single, twice divorced. My fingers burn 911 as I race out the door. I scream to the operator as I stumble down the steps, stifling the pain as I leap into the steel carriage and squeal down the streets to Michelle's address. A murderous rage turns in on myself. Carl, Carl, goatee, weak chin. I should have killed him when I had the chance. The police are already there when I arrive. Several units, their vehicle doors left open. Curbside hope abandoned. A lump in my throat strangles my breath. Another car pulls up, glides to a stop alongside the others. The officers remain inside, a painful lack of urgency. I step out onto the sidewalk, my feet arguing with each step toward the inevitable. A baritone wail lashes out at me. I turn to set my eyes on the sound. A car parked across the street behind me, a smile surrounded by a familiar goatee stabs back. Carl sits behind the wheel, tangible and gloating. She's already dead. <laughs> A storm of impotent fury riles me inside as I watch him pull away. The urge to follow deserts me. My throat runs dry. My heart skips one beat, then another, then punches me inside. I throw myself forward at the dilatory officer's vehicle. Officer, that's him! It's him! Stop that car! Seeing me coming, one of them steps out, hand on his gun grip, the other held out toward me. Hold it right there, buddy. Don't come any closer. Hands in the air where I can see him. Officer, that car! It's him! I saw him attack her! I said stop. But... You got some ID? Officer, the car! ID. <sighs> In my back pocket. He reaches in and takes my wallet, steps back and takes out my ID. Maru? They don't look like a Maru. What kind of name's that? He's getting away! Who? The guy in the car that just drove past you! He's the one that did it! Did what? There was an attack. I saw it on her webcam. I called it in! Webcam? Huh. What kind of webcam? Just a webcam, officer. What were you doing on that webcam? Watching. Then this guy attacked her. Hmm, okay. And you say that was the guy? That's him. Two knives and a broken dagger. A comedy of the absurd. One stabs and one laughs at the other. Clever blood drawn meekly on vice. Declaration of ecstasy. The wolf's cry in a barren wilderness. A cruel transmutation of love. Secrets brushed under the rug. A staggering volume of murder, a strychnine ego burst, serpentine longing snuffed out, and a karmic slap to the face, a mouthful of dust, we rate nothing in exchange. Suck dry the grand illusion, vacant glories on tentative egos, time and space mocked, the burden of exaltation. Welcome to the Terror Dome. The cosmic joke is on you. A delicately tragic painting framed perfectly in a single tiny box.
Mind Reeker. Background Anger, Episode 7. Starring Sean Schemmel. Featuring Witten Frank, Gregory Abbey, Richard Kingston, Vinnie Penner, Zach Selwyn, Michael Roxy Johnson, Jason Burdine, and Noel Rodrigo. Mind Raker. Background Anger is a Spiral Opus audio production created, written, and produced by Roy Burdine. Co-produced by Sean Schemmel. Sound engineered and mixed by Mark Labib. Mind Raker. Background Anger is copyright 2023. Roy Burdine.